as leaders of God, we are not to lead the people through our lifestyle and through our habits or whatever it is back into a life of worldliness. And this is vitally important because in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse number 16, the Bible lets us know, and God was talking to Israel about the laws concerning choosing a king or a leader over them. The Bible says in verse uh, number 14 of that chapter, Deuteronomy 17, when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you and possess it and dwell in it and say, I will set a king over me like all the nations that are around me, you shall surely set a king over you from whom the Lord your God chooses, one from among your brethren. You shall set him as king over you. You may not set a foreigner over you who is not your brother. Well, we can go into that a whole lot in detail because, you know, there are many churches today that are setting over them people as leaders and pastors, you know, uh, who have a, a degree, who have education, you know, went to the finest seminaries of the country, and, um, but not even saved, never experienced God's born again power transforming their lives. And as a result, that is a foreigner, that is a stranger, that is not anybody who have been born again. He's not a brother of us. He's not a brother of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, because he's not been saved. He's not been uh, born again. He's not coming through the door. And that door is not through the institutions of America. It is not through the finest colleges and universities across the, the country. It is not through the seminaries and the theological institutions that people go and matriculate. No, it is, has to be somebody that has been born again who have been transformed by the power of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. These are the people that are the brethren in the body of Christ. And, you know, I believe that a pastor should come out of a local church anyway, and not, not an institution. I'm not knocking institutions. There's a lot of things that people learn at institutions. But when the education becomes more demanding than the power of God and the Spirit of God and the Word of God in the minister's mouth, then we have a problem. Now, notice what he says in this uh, particular verse, verse number 16. But he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. Listen to what he said. Nor cause the people to return to Egypt, to multiply horses. For the Lord has said unto you, you shall not return that way again. Notice, we shall not go back into the world. We should not go back into heathen practices. I share with you out of the book of Peter where the Bible talks about the proverb that says that the, the, uh, the the, um, the, uh, the dog has returned to his own vomit and the sow back to her waddling in the mire. And the Bible talks about Lot's wife. Jesus gave us a warning. He said, remember Lot's wife. What is it that we remember so much about Lot's wife? Because God told Lot's wife, uh, Lot, um, when you go out of the city, remember we talked about that earlier at the beginning of this teaching, uh, Lot was called to go out of Sodom. And when she went out, what did she do? She turned back and the Bible says the judgment of God came upon her. She became a pillar of salt. There are many of you today, you started off in, the, in, in Christ. You started off with your walk in the Lord. And then you got so enamored by the things of the world. You got enticed by the things of the world, the pleasures of the world, the people of the world, the riches of this world. And as a result, you went back into Egypt. You went back into the world. You went back into the world system. And so I'm saying to you, my friend today, come out of the world, come out of the world. The Bible lets us know. So as a minister of God, I am not to teach the people once again, through my example or through my lifestyle to go back out into the world. I am not to teach the people that it's okay to go to parties. It's okay to go to concerts, you know, even if they're not uh, born again people, if they're just out, you know, uh, a group or something like that, it's all right to go and watch certain things at the movie house, you know, and I would not go and watch certain things in the movies and I wouldn't watch certain things on my TV as far as that's concerned. So as an example, I can't be going to picture shows that, that don't that reflect Christ or something that is just uh, R rated, something that I mean, with a lot of sex, a lot of violence, a lot of cussing and things like that. Cause when I do that, people will look at my example and say, well, pastor go there so I can go there too. I am in essence leading the people back into a worldly lifestyle. When I have all of the things of the world, when I'm living in a, uh, the biggest house in town or whatever, and I have several cars, you know, boats and all that kind of stuff, I'm teaching the people, you know, the, my, through my lifestyle, I'm teaching them the ways of the world. And Jesus said, or actually God said, you know, that we are not to lead the people back into the world, not into Egypt. He says, we're not to multiply horses or anything else, silver and gold. You can keep reading uh, it, all of these things that God told Israel that they are not to do. As far as the king is concerned, Solomon did every one of them. He multiplied horses to himself. He led the people back into uh, pagan worship, worldly worship. 
He, he, um, he multiplied silver and gold. He married a lot of wives. The Bible says we're not to multiply wives unto ourselves. Solomon broke all of the commandments of God. In this, the law of the king or the law for administering a king. So I just want to share with you folks, if you're sitting under a pastor, if you're sitting under a leader, a minister, I don't care whether it's apostle so-and-so, prophet so-and-so, evangelist, pastor so, you know, whatever, whoever it is. I'm telling you what the Bible says, that we are not as leaders to lead the people through our lifestyle, through our example, or through our word, our preaching and teaching to go back out into the world. There's too many people in the church today living like the world. And I believe that if we're li sitting under a man of God, a woman of God who has the grace and who has a lifestyle of holiness, then we ought to reflect to the people what God desires for them to live like. So we are not to lead the people back into Egypt. You know, the Bible says in Titus 2, I want to share that with you out of the book of Titus, Titus 2. There's some things that God said that we ought to command and teach. In Titus 2, the Bible says in verse number 11, he says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Notice, we ought to live our lifestyle of godliness, of, uh, of, of sobriety, of, of righteousness in this present world. Listen, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Then he tells us as leaders, He's talking to Titus here, but he says, speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. He says at one particular, the King James Version, he said, these things command and teach. So these are the things that we ought to be teaching the people of God. Um, righteousness. We ought to be teaching them godliness. We ought to be teaching them sobriety or responsible thinking. And we are not to, to the Bible says we are to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We ought to deny worldliness and things like that, worldly pleasures and things like that. Someone say, well, if we do all of that, um, what are we going to do for fun? I mean, why is it that we always got to have fun? We think we got to go to the world just to have fun. Now, I'm telling you right now, I don't think that Lot's wife thought it was fun when she turned around and looked back at Sodom when that place was being destroyed. Ask her. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you now. It wasn't fun to be turned into a pillar of salt. So these are the things that God commands us as pastors and leaders to teach and live as an example. You know, in my closing, Hosea was told to marry a wife of whoredom. You know, that woman, she, even though she married um, Hosea and she had kids, she bore his children for them. You know, she kept going back to other lovers, other strange men, other strange lovers and things like that. Are we going to be like Gomer? Are we going to be like the wife of Hosea, whereby we are married to the Lord, but we go out to our worldly lovers? We go out and we just indulge ourselves in the pleasures of the flesh and the pleasures of the world and that we just look to the things of the world? Come on, people. God expects us to be people who live in holiness. Notice he says that these are, should be the things that we ought to teach. Denying ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age among this wicked generation. I'm telling you right now, people, God loves us. He died and he sent his, he sent his son to die for us and to save us from our sin. So we need to come out of the world and we need to come into Christ.